the book of Ruth is a very necessary book. It's necessary. The book of Ruth tells us about our kinsman redeemer. The story of Jesus would not be full unless we had the book of Ruth in the Bible. Impossible. You could not understand our Redeemer and our kinsman Redeemer if it wasn't for the book of Ruth. We'd not really get the story. We wouldn't get the punchline, so to speak. People tell jokes, and if they don't come to the punchline, it's just a story. The book of Ruth tells us the whole plan of our Redeemer. The book of Ruth was written probably, well, the book of Ruth was written before David, and David was about 800 or so BC, somewhere between 800 and 1000 BC. So this predates David. And we'll try, we may have to do this in two messages. In the book of Ruth, we have a sad story of a widow, Naomi. Naomi means pleasant. The uh, masculine name for Naomi is Nome. I have a friend named Nome. Now, it came about in the days when the judges governed that there was a famine in the land. So this goes all the way back to the time of judges before the kings. And a certain man in Bethlehem went to pilgrim or sojourn in the land of Moab with his wife and his two sons. Now the two sons were twins. They were twins. Marilyn, these two boys were twins. Mm -hmm. how, old, how, how much did you weigh when you were born? Four pounds. And your sister weighed three pounds. So sometimes twins are very sickly because there's two of them. And evidently these two boys were sickly from the time of their birth. The name of the man was Elimelech, and Elimelech is his, it means God is my king. And the name of his wife was Naomi, which means pleasant. And the names of his two sons... Uh, Molon basically is uh, terminal. They thought that he was so sickly that he was terminal. And Shilon, uh, Shilon means failing. Terminal and failing are the two boys' names. Marianne and Mary, Marilyn. Now, it's just like this, uh, terminal and uh, failing would have been their names. In other words, they're going to die. They probably won't live very long. Well, they grew up. And Shelem of Ephrathites of Bethlehem in Judah. Now they entered into the land of Moab and remained there. These two twins and their father and mother. And Moab, of course, that was... Uh, Moab means water from the father. That was Lot's daughter. Uh, she named her son water from the father or seed from my, from my father. And they remained there. Then Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. And she was left with two sons. And they took for themselves Moabite women as wives. The name of one was... Uh, Orpha, which means fawn. It means uh, young and, and to uh, be... Uh, uh, to, have you ever watched uh, uh, young deer or lambs jump and play? That's what the idea is. It means full of life. This Orpha was full of life. She was like a fawn. And the name of the other was Ruth. Ruth. And... Uh, And they lived about 10 years. Ruth means faithful, of course. 
Then both Malone and Shilon also died. They were terminal. They were sick. Evidently, they were so sick that they didn't leave any children or the wives pregnant. They were so sick that they didn't cohabit much, evidently. And they also died, and the woman was absolute distressed and bereft of her children and of her husband's death. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law, that she might return from the land of Moab, for she had heard all the land of Moab that the Lord had visited his people and giving them food and had become, there was no more famine in the land. Now, according to law, okay, according to the laws of the land, Naomi owned these two daughters. Okay, you get that, Marilyn? Naomi owned these two women. She owned them. They were her property. Uh-huh. Okay, now she could have sold them as slaves. Or she could have sold them to the highest bidder to a husband. All right? And that way she would have been taken care of. But let's see what Naomi did. And so she departed from the place where she was and her two daughter-in-laws with her, and they went on their way to return to the land of Judah. Now you have to realize that these are the ancestors of David and Solomon. And Naomi said to her two daughter-in-laws, now she's going to be extremely gracious. She doesn't say, uh, we're going to go to the slave market, and I want you to beautify yourself real good, spruce up, take a bath, and, uh, and we'll see what we can get for you. Look real good. She didn't do that. He said, uh, each of you to return to your mother's house, and may the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. And may the Lord grant that you may find rest, each in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voices, and they cried and wept bitterly. And they said to her, No, but we surely will return with you to your people. But Naomi said to them, Return, my daughters. Why should you go with me? I have yet Have I yet sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? I'm too old to have children now. And women back then were not free. Women were not free. They were property. And since she was the matriarch of the family now, she is a boss. And so she is going to make the decisions. And she tells these two girls, I can't, I'm too old to have more children for you. Return, my daughters, and go, for I am too old to have a husband and to raise up children and bear sons. Now, you have to realize back then that a boy, if he was five years old, he could get married a lot of times. They became kings when they're five and six and seven years old, and sometimes they married them off. He said, will you therefore wait until they were grown, my sons? Would you therefore refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, for it is harder for me than for you, for the hand of the Lord has gone forth against me. I've lost my sons. I've lost all of my wealth. My land has been sold, and I have nothing. And again, they lifted up their voices and they wept, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. She would not leave. Then she said, Behold, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods, plural, gods, gods. They had gods. The Moabites had gods other than Jehovah. And return after your sister-in-law, but Ruth said, Do not urge me to leave you or turn back from following you, 
For where you go, I will go, and where you lodge, I will lodge, and your people shall be my people, and your gods, gods, your gods, the gods of you, what it, it says here, your God list is what it literally says, your God list. Your list of gods will be my gods. And uh, I will adhere to the God line of you, literally, is what she said in Hebrew. I will adhere to your gods, to your God list, and I will, uh, I will adhere to your God line. He said, where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. Thus may the Lord do to me, and worse if anything but death parts you from me. She loved her mother-in-law. This is the kind of a daughter-in-law to have. I know that Marilyn loved my mother. Mm -hmm. You loved her very much. It really hurt you. When she went, that was your best friend. That was your mother, because you never had a mother. Mm -hmm. Your mother was your enemy, and my mother was your friend. Yes, she was. She was your friend. And so that's the kind of relationship that this girl had with her mother-in-law that she, or with her daughter-in-law, that she loved. They loved each other, and they were going to die. If anything but death parts us, then when she saw that she was determined to go with her, she didn't say any more to her. So they both went until they came to Bethlehem, the house of bread. Now you've been to Bethlehem, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And it came about that when they had uh, come to Bethlehem that all the city was stirred because of them. They're coming home. But they're coming home poor and destitute. They have nothing except the clothes on their back. That's all. They're destitute. They had to sell out their land to leave. They went and tried to make a new start. They were homesteaders in the land of Moab, but all of the breadwinners died. And they said, is this Naomi? Is this Naomi? Is this pleasant? Is this the one that left here? And she said to them, do not call me Naomi, Call me Mary. Call me Mary. For the Almighty El Shaddai has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full. She had money when she left. But the Lord has brought me back empty. I had a husband. I had two sons. And I've come back here, and all I have is myself and my daughter-in-law. We're empty. We're broke. We're destitute. Why do you call me Naomi since the Lord has witnessed against me and the Almighty, El Shaddai, has afflicted me? She thought that God was punishing her. She didn't know the rest of the story. The rest of the story. Now, the book of Ruth is a very necessary book in the Bible. It's, it's absolutely necessary. We would not know about their kinsman redeemer. We would not know the relationship God has with us because of Jesus Christ. We wouldn't know that at all. We would not understand John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten redeemer, Goel, son, that whosoever believed him should not perish but have everlasting life. In Galatians, if Paul wrote, In the fullness of time God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, and this is the lineage right here. This is it. This is where it goes. I went out full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. No, he's going to bring her back, and she's going to be more wealthy and with more renown and fame than she ever would have ever before. So Naomi returned with her, with her Ruth, the Moabitess. And you have to realize that the woman, Ruth, is from a somewhat cursed line, isn't she? The whole line is because of incest with Lot and his daughters. Ammon 
His daughters had two sons, Moab, water from the father, and Ammon. It means inbred, people from my people. In other words, inbreds. That's what they were. They talk about the people in Kentucky and in Tennessee and, and down in the, back in the backwoods of Arkansas and, and Mississippi and all that, back in these hillbillies where they were, uh, their cousins were their fathers, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, like Oildale, so to speak. <laughs> That's what they were like. So Naomi returned with her mother, the Moabitess, and her daughter-in-law, and returned to the land of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. Uh, by the way, there was no corn in the land because corn came from America, and they didn't take it there until after Columbus. Naomi had a redeemer, is what it literally says, a goel, a redeemer. She had a redeemer of her husband's family, a man of great wealth, and the family of Elimelech, whose name was uh, in his strength, Boaz. Now, if you look and study about the Temple of Solomon, there was Jachin and Boaz, two pillars, and here we have that. We have Boaz as one of the pillars in front of Solomon's temple. And Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, Please let me go to the field and uh, harvest and glean among the ears of grain after one in whose sight I may find favor. And she said to her, Go, my daughter. So she left and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And it so happened, or so came about, she came to the portion of the field belonging to Boaz. It wasn't by accident that this happened. None of this is by accident. <coughs> Who was the family of Elimelech? And I may know this is a long story, but it's a beautiful story. It's a, it's a love story, but it's a love story in two ways. It's a love story that tells us how much God loves us and how God used this, these destitute women to become into the line of the Messiah King of Israel. Now Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, May the Lord be with you. And they said to him, May the Lord bless you. These are his workers. And this is how they greeted each other. Then Boaz said to his servant, who was in charge of the reapers, Who is that young woman over there? Do you think that woman, that he was attracted to that woman? Or do you think God used his heart to attract him to that woman, Marilyn? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That woman was something special in his sight. He was attracted to her. Who is that woman? Now, and the servant in charge of the reapers answered and said, She is among the Moabite women who returned from Naomi from the land of Moab. Moab. In other words, your relative. And then she said, Please let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. Thus she came and has remained. She asked this other person, Can I stay here and reap? Can I glean after the other people have gone? Can I? They couldn't take, by the way, the law was. Now, out here in these fields, Marin, we have corners of the field, don't we? Sure. Yeah, four corners. Now, according to the law of Moses, the farmer could never reap the corners. <coughs> he, God wouldn't let them. They couldn't reap the corners. They couldn't go out there. You had to leave the corners of the land. You could come up so far, but all the corners was for the wild animals and for the poor. Okay, they were for the wild animals and for the poor. So she's going to go out there in the field. Now, the reapers have gone through, but they had to leave that corner, and they had to leave this corner, and they had to leave that corner, and they had to leave that corner. So there's four corners out there that are standing with full grain. They're, they're not reaped at all. Now, how much was that? I don't know. I don't know how much, how many bushels or 
whatever you might say, was there. <clears throat> she said, please uh, let me glean and gather after the, the reapers uh, among the sheaves. Thus she came and has remained from morning until now, and she has been sitting in the house for a little while, sitting in the house. She's over there resting, sitting in the house. Then Boaz goes to Ruth. He goes over to her and he's going to talk to her. Now this is pretty bold because men and women didn't just didn't talk to strangers. Did you know that? Boaz really couldn't talk to Ruth unless he had a go-between, her mother or her father. Now she didn't have a father there, did she? But she had a mother, mother-in-law. So Boaz said to Ruth, Ruth means friend, Listen carefully, my daughter. Do not go and glean in any other field from now on. Do not go on from this one, but stay here with my maids. Now, a woman gleaning in the field sometime, it was dangerous. As today, Marilyn, did you ever have anybody come near accosting you here on this farm when you yeah. were here? Huh? Yeah. Yes, the workers. Mm -hmm. Some of the workers that come in from different places, yeah, they, they, they really, uh, you couldn't hardly get away from them, could you? They come in and looking in your windows at nighttime and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, was, that happened, didn't it? Yes, it did. yeah. Well, it was the same way back then. A woman was prey. A woman had no rights. But the only thing a woman had was her chastity. If a woman was chaste, then she could ask for a husband. And back in these days, if a woman married a man, now she had been married before, but if she had been a young woman, they would take a clean cloth and lay it underneath the bed. And when the man and the woman came together and there wasn't blood on that cloth, he could throw her away. And the deal was off. But stay with my maids. We have to realize here, this is a book of grace. G-R-A-C-E. It's a book of grace. It's a book of love. And it's a book, this woman, this Ruth, is a type of the church of Jesus Christ. In some ways. She's a, she's a, she is a type of the church. She's a chaste. She is a, a humble woman. And she is faithful. He said, let your eyes be on the field which they reap and go after them. And indeed, I have commanded the servants not to touch you. You are safe here. You're safe. I remember one time you told me, Marilyn, that out here you were picking apples or something out there doing something. And these guys came after you. These farm workers came after you. And Rudy, one of the, the people that were leasing your land from you, went out there and protected you. He started cussing and screaming and hollering and telling them, leave them alone. This happened. This happened then, too. Women in the field were very liable to be attacked. He said, when you're thirsty, go to the water jars and drink from what the servants draw. You go drink from what my servants draw. Then she fell on her face and bowing to the ground and said to him, Why I found grace and mercy in your sight, that you should take notice of me, since I am a Gentile. I am a dog. I'm a foreigner. I don't deserve this. I'm nothing. Humility. And Boaz answered and said to her, All that you have done for your mother-in-law after the death of your husband has been fully reported to me. He had an Eliezer. He had a go-between. He had been checking on her. Now, she probably was pretty, but she was very chaste and she was very moral. That some things happen in this story that really are unusual. 
she leaves herself wide open to him because she loves him. And he leaves himself wide open to her because he loves her. And how that you left your father and your mother in the land of your birth and came to the people that you do not even know. You haven't known these people before. You didn't, you weren't, you didn't get married in this land. May the Lord reward your work. And may your wages be full from the Lord God of Israel. Under whose wings you have come to seek refuge. And remember what she told her mother in law? Let your God list be my God list. And let your God inheritance be my God inheritance. Then she said, I have found favor in your sight, my Lord. For you have comforted me and indeed have spoken kindly to your maidservant. That I am not like one of your maidservants. I'm not like one of your servants. You're treating me better than your own servants. There's something different about you and me. I can see that, she says. I can see that you're treating me in a special way. And at mealtime, Boaz said to her, come here that you may eat the bread and dip your piece of bread in my wine sauce. Wine sauce. They had a wine sauce. Marilyn, Marilyn do I make a wine sauce? What is my wine sauce? It's red wine vinegar and olive oil and spices. And that's what this was. And you can have also another wine sauce. It's balsamic vinegar because vinegar is wine. It's wine that went sour. Now, sometimes wine goes sour when you don't want it to, but vinegar, you want it to. And they put mothers in vinegar, don't they? Mothers, what they call a mother. And so she sat beside the reapers, and she served her roasted grain. And she ate and was satisfied and had some left over. She had more food than she could eat. She was stuffed. And when she rose to glean, Boaz commanded his servants, let her glean even among the sheaves. Uh, let, her, let her glean even among that which hasn't been reaped yet. But first of all, that was a law, wasn't it? He's going to make sure that they don't get the corners of those fields. And do not insult her in any way. Do not say anything wrong to her at all. Or else. Now, She's eating rich people's food. Did you know that? The wine sauce were not for the poor. Mm -hmm. That's for the rich. This roasted grain that she got was not for the poor people. That's for the rich. He's treating her like a princess. You like this story? That's rags to riches, you know. And also... You shall purposely put out for her some grain from the bundles and leave it that she may glean and do not rebuke her in any way. Don't you do it. Leave it there and let her pick it up. I don't want her to have to reap it. I want you to give it to her. And so she gleaned in the field until evening. Now, by the way, gleaning this food, how long did this food have to last? Till the next year. So she had to have enough food. She had to glean enough food to take it home so it would last them all year. Mm -hmm. She had to have a lot of food. She had to have a lot of grain. So she gleaned in the field until leaving, and then she beat out what she had gleaned, and it was about an ephah of barley. That's quite a bit of barley. And she took it up and went into the city, and her mother-in-law saw that she had gleaned, and she also took it out and gave Naomi what she had left after she was satisfied. She, in other words, she ate everything, and then she gave her some. 
Now, this was not an easy process. This was an instant, instant potatoes in Maryland. They had to grind this grain, and they had to cook it. And that's what it's done. And she ground the grain, and she cooked what grain she wanted, and she cooked bread with it. And the bread, bread there was like what? What was the bread like that they made? It was, was it like our loaves of bread? Like a pancake, like a tortilla. And they usually cooked it on a metal, a rounded metal thing, like a dome-shaped metal, and they put it up there, and they flip it back and forth and cook it on both sides. And uh, then they'd eat it like a tear-off piece of it and eat it like tortilla. Tortillas are real old. You know? I mean, this, is, this goes all the way back to the Middle East now. And her mother-in-law then said to her, where'd you get all this food? Where'd you get all this food? Where did you glean today, and, and where did you work? May he who took notice of you be blessed. So he, she t told her mother-in-law, whom she had worked, and she said, the name of the man with whom I work today is Boaz. In his strength. And Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, May he be blessed of the Lord who has not withdrawn his mercy, his kindness, his grace to you, the living and to the dead. And then again Naomi said to her, This man is your, our Redeemer. That's what he said. This man is our Redeemer. He is one of our closest redeemers, relatives, goels. Then Ruth the Moabitess said, Furthermore, he said to me, You shall stay close to my servants until you have finished all the, my harvest. So now there's a plan. There's a plan. Uh, Marilyn's father was uh, vice president of Mobile Oil Company, Pipeline Division. Now, what your father should have done is gone down there with all those young executives and brought some of them home to his daughters. Because that's exactly what's going to happen right here, except the mama's going to do it. Uh, bring home somebody, some responsible, some uh, honorable suitor. So Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, it is good, my daughter, this is good. This is real good. You go out with the maids, lest others fall upon you in another field. You go out with him. You stay here. What happened, what I say a while ago, lest someone fall upon you and rape you, maybe kill you. So she stayed close by the maids of Boaz in order to glean until the end of the barley harvest and the wheat harvest. The barley harvest and the wheat. Now, barley and wheat are different things. The barley harvest is a more coarse grain, and the wheat is what you make fine bread out of. And she lived with her mother-in-law. Chapter number three now. Remember, when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, that he might redeem those that are under the law. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Redeemer, Son, Goel. And Jesus is our Goel. So keep that in mind. This is, this is the story in the Old Testament that ties the redemption story in the New Testament. And Omri <coughs> and her mother-in-law said to her, My daughter, shall I not seek security for you? When you have children, when you have daughters, you seek security for them. You want them to be secure. Did you want your daughter to be secure, oh, yeah. Sharon? Yes, absolutely. And she is secure. She's happy. She has a doctor. She's happy. Very well educated and secure and happy. Should I not seek security for you? Should I not want you to be happy? Should I not want you to have a secure future? Because I don't. I don't have one. 
I'm an old woman, and I probably can't have any more children, and who would want me anyway? That it may be well with you. And now is not Boaz our Redeemer, with whose maids that you were, behold, he uh, winnows barley at the threshing floor tonight. He's going to be there. He's going to be winning barley at, the at, the, at tonight. And tonight means what? After dark. After the day is done. Now. Now. She tells her to go baptize yourself. Every Jewish girl, when she was through her monthly time, went and was baptized in a baptismal font of Bithma. She would dip herself 12 times, one for each tribe of Israel, and she tells her to go do that. Go do this. Go bathe yourself like you're going to get married, like you're going to your husband. Go bathe yourself. Wash yourself. Bathe yourself, anoint yourself, and put on your best clothes. And go down to the threshing floor, but do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. Now, my sister was a skullduggery type person. Now, she tells her to go, put on, to go bathe yourself, go dip yourself like you're going to get married. And go put on your best clothes. I remember when my sister told her children, go put on your worst clothes, your dirtiest clothes, and your worst shoes. We're going to go to your grandma's and she'll buy you new stuff. That's not what happened here. Put on your best clothes and go down to the fleshing floor. I want you to look like a princess. New clothes. Now, what should have been done is you should have gone down and got yourself a brand new suit of beautiful dresses and clothes and shoes and met these wonderful, charming, young executives. You should have had the shiniest shoes and the prettiest little purses and their hair done just perfect like that. See, that's what Naomi did for her daughter. And it shall be when the, he lies down you shall notice the place where he lies down. Now, I want you to go seduce him. <laughs> That's what you told her in all reality. I want you to go seduce this man. You're all cleaned up, you're all pretty, and you're anointed, and you got perfume on, and all this stuff, you got your best clothes on, and now, you shall go and uncover his feet going to remove her blanket and you're going to lay down and then he will tell you what you shall do after that intimate relationship intimate become intimate with him and she said to her all that you said I will do she's taking a chance people the mercy and the grace of God is going with her. So she went down to the threshing floor and did according to all that her mother-in-law had commanded her. And when Boaz had eaten and had drunk, his heart was merry. He was drunk. He was intoxicated, Marilyn. He's intoxicated. Now remember, many years after this happened, David was king of Israel, and he had a relationship with uh, a girl. And the girl was married, and the girl got pregnant, Bathsheba. And he brought her husband to his house. He sent for his general and said, send him to my house. And he got him drunk, didn't he? so that he would go home and lay with his wife. So now, is that what Naomi told her to do? Wait till he's drunk? Did she tell her that? Wait till he's drunk. Okay. And uh, he went down to lay down at the end of the heap of grain, and she came secretly, mysteriously, 
and uncovered his feet and lay down. Right there with him. But not at his feet. Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> he worked her way up. Yes. Okay. And it happened in the middle of the night that the man was startled and bent forward, and behold, a woman was laying at his feet. He was drunk. He passed out. He wanted to sleep. as good sleeping pill, that wine was. And he said, Who are you? And she said, I am Ruth, your maid. So spread your covering over your maid, for you are a close, you are my redeemer. In other words, I want to be your wife. I want to be your wife now. I want to be your wife. You're my redeemer. Now, I want you to be my husband. And I'm willing and I would like this very much. Now remember, she's got her best clothes on. She's just had a bath. And she smells good, and she's all oiled up <laughs> with an ointment. Then he said, uh, may you be blessed of the Lord, my daughter. You have shown your last kindness to be better than the first. By not going to these young uh, athletes, handsome young men, for the poor rich. She didn't go after any young men, did she? She went after Boaz. He was not young. Many times in the Old Testament and up until, well, until the 1950s or so, men would make their fortune, especially in Europe. I had a friend uh, named Bill. And he got married when he was 50 years old. He married an 18-year-old girl because that's the way he did. He was from Ireland. He made his fortune, and then he picked him a young woman so that she could have children and he could have heirs. And he picked her, and I think they had two or three children. I met one daughter, and I know they had at least two or three boys. And that's the way they did it. Now, this man is an older man. This girl wasn't going for the flash in the pan. She's going for security, and she's going for what God, she thinks God wants her to do and what God wants to have, her in, have in her life. Now, my daughter, do not fear. I will do for you whatever you may say. And all my people in the city know that you're a woman of... Uh, of excellence, of more excellent moral character. You're a woman of honesty and humility. And now it is true that I am a redeemer. I am your redeemer. But, strong adversative conjunctive, but, there is a redeemer closer than I am. He wasn't going to touch her. He could have taken her that night as his wife, but he wasn't going to touch her. He was an honorable man too, wasn't he? We have an honorable woman and we have an honorable man here. He could have been with her that night. They could have sealed their marriage before God and she would have been his. Except there was a problem. A problem. There was a redeemer, there was a kinsman closer than him, and he could not overstep his rights at all. Let's have a prayer. Our Father, we thank you for this story, for this message in your word. We thank you how you have shown your love through this book. We thank you for your love that in the fullness of time you sent forth your son made under the law, made of a woman that he might redeem those, us, that are under the curse 
We thank you that you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son that he might be our Redeemer. And Father, use this message to go out and touch people's lives to show the world how much you love them and what you gave. In Jesus' name we pray.